Hi everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at analyzing two categorical data sets with software. Uh, so we uh, just kind of had a video on sort of how the nuts and bolts of analyzing two categorical data sets works. We looked at some of the different percentages that you can calculate. Uh, and we looked at how to determine relationships through conditional percentages. But again, none of this is really stuff that you want to do by hand. Uh, you know, all, all data scientists and statisticians uh, use computer software, so I want to kind of get us finding these numbers and calculating all this with computer software. So um, I'm going to kind of go along with the examples that we did in the last video. So we're going to be kind of going over like how would I calculate all the stuff we calculated by hand in the last video. I'm going to calculate it with uh, computer software. I'm going to be using StatKey today and again that's on www.lock5stat.com. So if we go to my website, so matt-2show.org, I'm clicking on the statistics tab and I want to find that data that that, that um, uh, that we were talking about in the last video. And I want to use that data to create the contingency table. Remember, a contingency table is um, a table that summarizes the counts when you're dealing with two categorical data sets. So um, data sets are, if you click on the statistics tab on my website and then data sets, that data came from the Math 140 fall 2015 survey data, which is sort of halfway down the list on the data sets uh, page. So that's right there. If you click on that, you would get the data sets. And again, you might have to scroll over to find the social media and the tattoo data. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of data here, but uh, the social media is on column A, B, and looks like the tattoo is on column AF. All right, so all I'm going to do now, when you're, when you're actually copying and pasting two categorical data sets into StatKey, they do need to be together. So you do want to copy and paste them together uh, next to each other um, on um, a fresh Excel spreadsheet before you copy and paste them into uh, StatKey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where I'm in Excel right now and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the tattoo data and the social media data next to each other. So I'm going to click File and New. I just want to open up a new Excel spreadsheet. Now um, again I'll hold my cursor over the tattoo column. Notice how it turns into a downward arrow. If I left click it'll highlight the entire column. So I'm going to do that. Control C for copy. And I'm going to go to that new fresh Excel spreadsheet that I just opened and I'm going to paste in the tattoo data. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the social media. This is the, the example we were in our last video. We were studying the, the relationship between tattoos and what social media you like. So here's the social media data, column AB. Again, I hold my cursor above the column. See how it turned into a downward arrow and then left click just like that. You get the whole thing highlighted and then control C. We copy it. Let's go back to the new Excel spreadsheet and paste. A lot of times in the directions in my book you'll see me say, it'll say in the directions, copy and paste the two columns together before you paste them into StatKey. And this is what I'm doing. I'm putting the two columns next to each other so I can copy them both. Now one thing that's a good idea, and it doesn't really, some computer programs you don't really need to do this, they have sort of, um, it, they have software built in that handles this situation, but a lot of times if you're dealing with two data sets from the same people, ordered pair, these, these two, two values here came from the same people, then you want to look at if there's any blanks. So if you see blanks, usually what you want to do is delete out anybody that has a blank. Um, so if we see a blank there and a blank there, now if they're both blank you can actually, it'd be okay, but especially if you have one that answered only one of the questions but not the other, it can sometimes throw off the counts in computer programs. So this is sometimes called cleaning your data. As you go through the data, you delete out any rows that um, have blanks. So what I did there was I, um, 
I actually clicked on the row that had the blank. I right click, right click, and then I click delete, and then I just put pick entire row. So entire row. So I'm deleting out any rows that have a have a blank. So as I'm going through these, I see a blank there. Now it could be both of them could be blank, or it could be just one of them. It's actually the ones that's the worst is when you have just one of them as blank. So right here, I'm gonna delete out just the blanks. Any any anyone where one or both of the um, questions were not answered by the person. Remember, there's non-response uh, bias, right? Sometimes when you ask questions of people, they don't always answer the question. So what I'm doing is I'm deleting out people that didn't answer the question. So, again, I think it takes longer to, to, to do this sometimes than it does to analyze the data. Sometimes cleaning up the data takes longer, especially if you've got a bigger data set. See what I'm doing here. Now look at this one. This is a really important one right here, number 270. This person does not have a tattoo, but they did not answer the question about what social media they prefer. So what I'm going to do is I want to delete them out um, because they didn't answer both questions. If you're looking at a relationship between two uh, variables, delete out people that didn't answer both questions. So you don't want them in the data. They have to answer, have answered both questions. And here's a couple others. See these two right here, they both prefer Twitter, um, but they didn't answer the question of whether they have a tattoo or not. So again, I'm going to delete them out. Again, since I'm looking at a relationship test, I don't want anybody that didn't answer both questions. And then we should be good. Yeah, if you notice, it goes down to 327, but the top is a title, so there should have been 326 total people, and I think that's what we had. So we're good. We've kind of cleaned up our data. Now what I'm going to do now is just highlight both of these. So again, you can click and drag if you want, uh, or you can just hold your control key down on your keyboard and click on click above both columns and it'll highlight both. Now remember, control C. Let's do that. And you can also you can also just click and drag if you want. So if you're better, if you want to drag, if it's not too big of a data set, you can probably just click and drag it down. Um, that's a possibility as well. And there we're just copying it. Now I'm going to go to stat key. So that is on lock5stat.com. And then we clicked on the button that says stat key. Now these are two categorical data sets. So we're going to click right here where it says two categorical variables. Okay, that's so if you're analyzing two categorical data sets, that's what you'd click on. And there we go. See, this is called a contingency table. So now I click edit data. And you want to delete out data that's in there. So we're going to push control A and delete. And now I'm just going to paste those two columns of data. So I did control V. Now this is raw data, so I want to click the button that says raw data. Now remember, the question says, does your data have a header row? Header row means title. So again, if you look at the top, it did have a title. Now if you do get an error message on this, and sometimes stat key will give you an error message, a lot of times it's the title. Like sometimes the title will have a weird apostrophe or something like that that maybe stat key doesn't like. So a lot of times if I get an error message, I'll delete out the title. But this one still has a title, so I'm going to leave uh, the button click that says header row. And I'm just going to push OK. And there we go. Now if you notice, this has all the same counts that we did um, last time. Notice it also created a stacked bar chart. So you can kind of see that this is a bar representation of the, the brown area here is, is no tattoo, the blue is tattoo. So I can see how a lot more people did not have a tattoo than did have a tattoo for each of the social media groups. You can also switch the variables. So if you don't, if you want the social media as the columns and the tattoo as the um, as the as the uh, rows or vice versa, um, I'm going to put the Snapchat, the social media as the rows and the 
tattoo as the column. So if I click this so switch variables, you can see now that it looks a lot like the one we did in our last video. So if we, if we kind of pull that up here, here's, the, here's the, what the whiteboard looked like in our last video. You can see how here's that, this is where I got this contingency table. Notice again, we have five rows and two columns, so this would be a five by two table. Okay, and notice how the stack bar chart now gives me for all the tattoo people are grouped together and all the no tattoo people are grouped together with the different social medias that they like. So this is a, um, uh, this stacked bar chart is a representation of the contingency table. Now what's really cool about this is you can actually, stack key actually will let you, will calculate the proportions for you. So if we look at the go back and look at those proportions that we calculated in the last video, well, the first one we looked at was the percentage of all students have a tattoo. So if you're dealing with out of all students, then you want the overall button. So if you look right here where it says proportions in stat key, click the overall button, and this will give you all the overall percentage. It'll, it'll give you joint uh, proportions. It'll also give you the uh, proportion marginal proportions so we were looking for what percentage of all the students have a tattoo well the yes here is the tattoo and then if you look at the bottom of the yes column right here you'll see it right here it says 0 0.261 0 0.261 and that is the same answer I got when I calculated it by hand it just divided the 85 by the 326 just like we did uh, by hand last time, but the computer already calculated it. So if you're looking for the the um, percentage of the total that have tattoos, you just go to the row or the column where your tattoos are. So there, there's the answer right there. Um, notice the next one was uh, what's the percentage of, of uh, students um, both prefer Instagram and have a tattoo. Again, since it's out of all the students, again, you want to use the overall proportion button in stat key. So again, if you're talking about using the grand total out of all the students, then you're going to want to go to, to, um, to the overall button. Now we're looking for, again, if I look at the problem, it says both prefer Instagram.